create as I speak. This video finds you. Hey, fellow hearts! In today's video, we are going to get deeper into manifestations and how you can do them. So, there are many ways leading to the same goal. Basically, it's all about energy. And energy can be produced in different ways. What you want to do is to create something from nothing. For that purpose, you need to connect with what quantum physicists call the zero-point energy field or the quantum field. Well, yeah, this sounds hilariously complicated, but actually it's quite simple. I mean, this is where physicists might disagree, but my competence is witchcraft, not quantum physics. Anyway, if you are in need of some explanations about quantum physics explained in a very nice way, then I would suggest you this channel. Quantum Gravity Research. But in the beginning it's not necessary to know your math. I guess you will be drawn to those facts anyways to improve your skills after a while. For now, just think about energy. That's complicated enough. So you remember the seven laws from my first video. What we need today are law number one, two, three and six. Number one is mentalism. Mind over matter. Thoughts are the source from which every creation starts. So if you want to manifest something, you start right there in your mind. There is one very important thing to know about your brain. You have to acknowledge the fact that you have a left brain and a right brain and those are separated. So the right brain is the creative part. This is the part we need and this is the part that we have switched off a little in the last, I'd say, 200 years minimum. So if you want to create something, first you need to ignore the left side of your brain. Imagine this half like some monkey in a cage screaming around like crazy, jumping, throwing feces, screaming stuff at you which you urgently need to think about or need to do. This monkey is in rage and he wants you to react to anything he's just thinking about. Well, if you ask me, there's no need to react. It's a feces slamming ape. So why would you even care about it? So whenever this monkey starts screaming at you, like for instance, do the dishes, stop meditating right now, we have to go to the supermarket or whatever. Watch this ape. Don't let him tell you what you should be thinking. Stop thinking unconsciously. Notice how you think. Meta think. Think consciously. Notice your ape. There are many ways, like I said, to manifest. What I am using are my chakras all the time. So um, when I am in this meditative state where I don't care much, so much about the ape anymore, then I um, go through all my chakras, I open them up. So first I connect with my root chakra, which lies at the base of my spine. This is just for grounding. This is how you start your meditation. You ground yourself and connect to Mother Earth. You forget about every uncertainty and you start to feel safe. So when you are in this mood, feeling safe, you go up to your sacral chakra, which lies below your navel. This is where we feel pleasure and excitement and fun and all those crazy lovable things. Um, so this chakra is connected to good feelings. And this is what you need when you are manifesting. You want to feel good about your desire. You want to attract the frequency of fun, kind of. So this is why you have to connect with your sacral chakra where you feel this hap happiness while you are manifesting. So, start with your root chakra, go up into your sacral chakra and imagine your wish playing out. While you feel happiness and this fire in your belly, then move up to your solar plexus chakra. This is where you feel your power. 
This is where you are convinced that you have the power to achieve everything that you long for. So, when you are done, imagine your wish. You move up to this chakra and feel confident about your desires and that you can manifest them. You feel very certain about your power while you are activating your solar plexus. Like thinking about the sun and its power. You are energy too and you can use this energy. So the next point where we want to go is the heart chakra which is green like my pullover <laughs> and it's connecting you to everyone and everything else in this universe. So when you're done believing in yourself you go up to this point where you send out your desire and love into this world. You feel grateful, you feel love, you feel a friendship to everyone and everything on this earth. And this is the moment where your wish gets sent out into this universe, where it sort of walks into the realm of possibilities to meet your desire. So, this is how we are using mentalism, law number one, to manifest. The next thing we need is law number two, correspondence. As above, so below. As below, so above. So, now that you have manifested something in your imagination, it has to come true in another realm. As above, so below. Your imagination, don't get confused by the word imagination because it sounds like it's as if it's nothing, but that's not the truth because as above, so below. In your realm of imagination, whatever happens there has to happen in other realms too. So think about something like the room of possibilities. This is how I call it. Think about this place as an actual place a touchable and concrete place where different frequencies kind of meet. Like, let's say, you wish for a new job. You're sitting at home thinking about this perfect new job and what you would like to do there. Let's say you would like to have a big payment and um, nice partners and everything's just easy going. Somewhere on this planet, someone else is thinking the exact same thought, just from the other direction. So he's a boss and he's looking for someone working with him for his nice team, the good payment, all the stuff that you just thought about. So those are very similar frequencies that will meet in the room of possibilities with, because they attract each other heavily, because they are the same, so they want to meet. The only thing you need to do is believing in as above, so below. You create. Whatever you create in your mind, you do create it somewhere else, as above, so below. <laughs> yeah, law number three, vibration. That's the physics behind this process. Similar vibrations attract each other and every single thought produces such a frequency. This is a physical law. So, what I just told you about the room of possibilities. Someone has this frequency to his thought meeting the same frequency to your thought because they are the same. This is how frequency attract each other. And this is not just for light and all those materialistic stuff, uh, it's the same in an, on an immaterial plane. So the last stop on this journey is law number six, cause and effect. So what we are talking about all the time is the so-called law of attraction. Similar frequencies attract each other. This is nothing new. People have been working on that for ages. Um, some people say that the word attraction contains the term action. So therefore you would need to take some action. 
Yes, action needs to be taken, however, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Because you may be heavily confused by the performance society. So, what is action? In Vedic science and age old philosophy of India, in my preferred knowledge, this is known as the principle of economy of effort, to do less and accomplish more. Even better, the ultimate goal is to do nothing and accomplish everything. Everything. Don't take any action in this material world. Take action in the ethereal realm. This is where you want to go to do your magic. Just think about law number four, polarity. This is the only thing that you need Learn to never be polarized by anything that occurs. Learn to breathe before you react. Learn to put intention before thought. You want to meet a thing. You want to control your thoughts to the point where you get free from every initial reaction. Our initial reaction always come from our experiences and are connected to our blocks and traumata. Our initial reaction to be quite honest with you, most of the time is worthless and it's just causing more trouble. Try getting rid of it, take action before you think and let intention guide you instead of judgments. So yeah, you should be taking action but you really have to understand what it means to take action. Your action is to train your mind. What you want to accomplish is a positive, peaceful, and loving mindset, which is a heavy duty. In Tibetan thesis about rainbow bodies, it says that you have to have only positive and loving thoughts for 30 years to overcome your bodily burdens. So get ready to start your personal Groundhog Day. You have to learn how to expand your love and positive thinking and you will be starting over and over and over and over and over again. Because your loving mindset will be interrupted by so many So your loving and positive mindset will be interrupted by so many BS. Like, for instance, if you're cleaning up your house and thinking something like I hate doing the dishes. Well, this little plate just made you start over with your loving thoughts for 30 years. <laughs> Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself, start over again and do that for the rest of your life. The next video will be all about forgiving yourself and others. Because that's the only action on this planet that urgently needs to be taken. Maybe you should even quit your job for that purpose. Well, whatever you do, fellow hides, make yourself comfortable and never be scared. See you next time fellow hearts where we are going to talk about manifesting peace on this earth. How you can install peace to this crazy world. You will be sensing oneness and unity more again. and more. Bye. You will be feeling peace after a while and you will be finding a totally new understanding about the concept of peace itself.